So welcome to Editor's Berry. Um, this is our, our first type of this kind of event in which Crystal Fletcher has agreed to host Jess Kotzer in terms of um, a, an interview about books in particular, about writing, about publication, about research, um, about thinking about um, publication. Um, and so it's really a comprehensive thing. I think the most interesting portion of this for me is that both Crystal and Jess are local. Editors Berry is servicing a local community of editors, authors, and publication specialists, anything north of Toronto. So these two ladies are perfect fits for our kind of organization and the interests that we have here, you know, uh, locally. <clears throat> Crystal Fletcher is an author herself and obviously an interviewer with All About Canadian Books, and I'll allow her to um, uh, tell you all about her YouTube channel. And her guest today is Jess Coetzer, who's written a piece particularly um, about Lyme disease and about metabolism. So I'm excited to hear, um, to learn. Um, and also I think the piece that's great for us is that Jess is known as a great collaborator, somebody who is able to make connections with other people within the community with, that, with other ideas about publishing, about selling, about promotion, um, about research, about thinking and writing. So welcome ladies, gentlemen, thank you so much. And Janet, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. And thank you to um, Barry Editors. Thrilled to be here. Both Jess and I are thrilled to be here. And before I interview Jess, I'll just love to give you a little bit of background about all about Canadian books and how it originated. And it really was a pandemic project. When the pandemic came, I, like many people, stuck inside, didn't know what to do, and really felt quite helpless. And um, I thought, gosh, you know, I really want to do something. So <laughs> I started a YouTube channel and read my book, Beauty Beneath the Banyan. And when I started the channel, I mean, this is totally out of my comfort zone <laughs> so out of my comfort zone you know um technology um middle-aged woman who is shy and doesn't want to be on camera so the fact that I actually did this is really kind of crazy but like anything crazy it was like probably the best thing I've ever done and when I started reading my book I thought oh you know, maybe I'll get part one done, maybe five, 10 chapters. Well, I mean, look at the size of this book. It, it's over 100,000 words. And I mean, we know the way the pandemic went. I finished the book. <laughs> look, I finished reading the book. And, um, and it, actually, I will take a step back and I'll say, as someone who wrote the book over 10 years ago, to be online reading your book, that was kind of a surreal experience because a part of me as I was reading I was like oh I'm so proud like I'm so smart like I'm so proud of what I wrote and then other days when I read I was like oh my god this is terrible like why did they publish me so it was a really <laughs> interesting experience as a writer but I'm very thankful for it because when I finished I had um, I had a I had a little bit of an audience, and they were asking me, "What are you going to do? What are you going to do now? Like you're finished?" And I thought, "What am I going to do now? Like I've started this channel, I might as well keep it going." And I am a big fan of Eleanor Wachtel and Sheila Rogers. Like I love CBC's book programs. That would be my dream job. And I thought, "Gosh, you know, I could interview authors." And my cousin happens to be an author. So she was my first interview, Lucy E.M. Black. And then I started interviewing authors from my publisher, Anana Publications. And I was really quite surprised. But then publishers started reaching out to me and were asking me to interview authors. And here we are now. I'm ending season three of all about Canadian books. So it's been it's been quite a journey. And the, the program has taken on different forms. When I started, it was just all about books. And then I thought, oh, got to niche it down. So I specialize in Canadian books, like Canadian authors, 
I really wanted to, especially with the pandemic, this whole focus on local. So I do independent presses and that's where I've netted out. The program, I've played with different things. I've had writers do readings, offer writing tips, as well as book chats. And right now, I've divided the program into two segments, and that's what we'll be doing this evening with Jess. The first segment is like a get to know the author. And I really love doing this segment because it's just supposed to be fun. And if you follow a lot of book um, interviews, they typically ask a lot of the same questions. So in my get to know the author interviews, I ask things that are a little shall we say different and just just like let's get to know the person because that to me is part of the fun about reading is to know the person who's written the book and the second interview part segment it, I'd like to it's it's a book chat but it's the story behind the book and I grew up oh my gosh I'm going to age myself here but with MTV and it was behind the music and you know um, another plug for CBC here Randy Bachman talks about the stories behind the music and I I love to know what inspired a writer to book to write their book you know was it the character that came to them first or was it, were they driving down a road and all of a sudden a story started unraveling? So that's what I really like to uncover in my interviews. I'm not out to stump anyone. I want them to come on the program and just have a, a casual, fun conversation. And that's really what we're here to do this evening. And I'm just so thrilled, our theme with Local, that Jess has agreed to come on the program. So... <laughs> and are we ready to get to know Jess, everyone? Okay, so now Jess, and again, if anyone wants to jump in with questions too, please do. And just to sample just kind of how um, laid back my questions are, here's the first one. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, Jess. What song would get you on the dance floor? Oh, what song would get me on the dance floor? Um, there's a song. I can't even remember what it's called. I work hard every day by logic. It's it's a rap song, but <laughs> it's just it's just about that hustle mentality, which is kind of ironic because when I wrote my book, I was not in hustle mentality. I was in creative flow mentality, but that's not what would get me going. Nice. All right. What do you do on Monday nights? Oh, on Monday nights, I host an author mixer, also on Zoom. And I started it in July of 2021. Probably a pandemic project as well. Let's blame the pandemic. And ever since then, I had eight people show up the first week. And then two of those people were returns from week one. So I was like, okay, I guess this is a regular thing now. And we've gone every Monday ever since. Lovely. Lovely. Now, I'm just going to hold up your book here. And you, it, okay, so it's it's not just Lime. And you have used a pen name, Yessie Young. What made you decide to use a pen name instead of your name? Yeah, I I think if I could go back, I would use my name. But at the time, I was embarrassed. Embarrassed to be a writer, embarrassed to talk about having Lyme disease, and embarrassed to put myself out there like I'm somebody and I, we've talked about this. I still have that imposter syndrome, which I'm resisting a lot. And it gets easier the more you put yourself out there. And the more you surround yourself with other people who are also entrepreneurs and authors and, and freelancers. So it's getting easier. But at the time, I wanted to hide. I, I didn't even tell my family and friends that I wrote the book, which made building my brand really hard. 
Oh, but you know what? I love to hear that you that you're saying now that you would use your name. Yeah. Yeah. It's not erotica. <laughs> Even if it was, I would want to use my name. It's just it gets complicated when you have, you know, so many different names and and um I've since writing that book, I've had many different brands as well. And now I'm just Jess Kotzer, JessKotzer.com. I can't do, um, you know, so many different brands when I change so often. But back then, I was shy and wanted to hide. <laughs> well, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Jess, what inspires you? What inspires me? I think um, I felt blocked recently, creatively, and and realized that creating inspires me. If I'm not creating, I'm not inspired, and then I get stuck in a negative feedback loop. But even if I could just do my morning pages or stream of consciousness writing, that inspires me. It just, it's practice. So creating content makes me creative and that inspires me. Lovely. What drives you crazy? What drives me crazy? I, the dishes not being done, my partner not doing the dishes, but I'm pretty easy. It's hard to make me mad. What drives me crazy? Um, conviction sometimes. People are have such strong conviction convictions which is amazing but also gets us into trouble when we're so opinionated about our ideologies and religions and everything we believe in so I, I like living in the nuance and black and white drives me a little crazy <laughs> okay best advice what's the best advice you've been given I don't know if this was advice or if it was my dad just being a, a jokester but when I was little, he used to, and he's he's not a very serious guy, but he used to tell me, between you and me, everyone's an idiot, and I'm not too sure about you. And it's it's kind of awful, but I've also seen how he lives his life with that advice, and nothing faces him. People don't get to him, and he accepts, he accepts people for who they are. And I think that's why, because <laughs> we're all idiots, so it's okay. Can you tell us something about you that would surprise us? That would surprise you? Um, that would surprise you. I used to do stand-up comedy. Um, I used to, when I was 14 years old, I was a drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Just pot, but still pretty young. Okay. Yeah. You definitely surprised me. <laughs> I am. I'm stopped. I'm shocked. Okay. So let's go back to that stand up comedy. We'll go to that one first. Do you remember any of your routine that you did way back in the day? Uh, not really. I had a, I had a tight five minute set and I really just talked about vaginas and this fantasy I had about being on full bear. And I don't remember it, and I, I can't repeat any of it now. And even if I could, it's it's very offensive. I needed to double fist beers when I would, you know, when I would do my set, which is not a good reason to, or is a good reason to stop doing it, uh, because it's it's not good, especially when you are recovering from Lyme disease to to you know get drunk every weekend to perform. Yeah. Now, if I may, if I may ask, were you writing at this time or did the, or were you, was this the start of your creative expression? I, I've always been writing since I was in kindergarten. I was writing and I never stopped. I was writing a fiction novel at the time. Um, at the time that I was doing comedy and that sort of, that was always the end goal. But the Lyme disease book came earlier 
just because it coincided with a time in my life where I was obsessed with doing research about Lyme disease. If you could automate anything in your life, your daily life, what would you automate? How realistic does it have to be? It doesn't have to be realistic <laughs> at all. We're all writers and editors. We play outside the line, so it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I automate so much of my life already, but if I could automate my kitchen, if I could set timers on things being clean and have a little robot to help with keeping the house clean that would be amazing but realistically um just automating there's there's so many tools that I leverage to automate email sequences and project management and contracts and invoicing and all that stuff so I I wouldn't want to pick just one I think for a total, total newbie, getting Calendly and automating your your booking is like a really important thing to do 